what does it mean to be a failure? In every person's life, there comes times where one feels at their absolute lowest, that despite their best efforts, they can do nothing right. They cannot affect or change the world around them, and they're subject to the cruel whims of fate. Some of these people lash out at others at this time. Others withdraw into themselves. Indeed, this theme and pervasive character trait of dealing with failure and being ineffectual is a common trend among pathologic characters, and among the humble faction in particular. That said, no one exemplifies the bitterness of failure so much as Stanislav Rubin. Rubin is among one of Artemis' three old childhood friends, the others being Laura Ravel and Bad Grief. Yet he does not welcome the player with warmth or familiarity when he realizes that the Harvest is back in town. Indeed, he does not greet you at all. When you first arrive to town and learn of your father's murder, you desperately try to reach out to your old friends in order to get your bearings in this familiar yet unwelcoming place. Your two other friends come through. Alara offers you a place to rest and some food, and Grief offers protection and wares at a price. But when you try to find Reuben, he isn't at home. Instead, Bachelor Dankovsky is squatting there, and he informs Artemy that Reuben, like many other townspeople, blame him for Isidore's death. While this news is only mildly disturbing to the player, since they're used to dealing with hostility and mistrust in the town at this point, it must be pretty disheartening for Artemy to hear that one of his oldest friends won't give him the benefit of the doubt in regards to his own father's murder. Later, Artemy does finally catch up with Reuben, who's now calmed down thanks to Laura's counsel. But, even as you try to explain your absence to Reuben, he doesn't want to hear it. He continues to blame you for the death of your father, saying that even if Artemy wasn't the actual person to stab Isidore, he also wasn't there to save Isidore. Meanwhile, Reuben has been in town this whole time. In this conversation, we, the player, learn that Reuben is also a physician. While Artemy was off at medical school in the capital, Reuben remained here by Isidore's side, learning from Artemy's father about how to become a local physician. In this time, he slept on Isidore's floors, and tried his best to learn everything that he had to teach. But either through his own intolerance of the kin's Menku tradition, or because of Isidore's unwillingness to share information, Reuben was never taught the secret techniques needed to truly inherit Isidore's burden of Town Doctor and Town Menku. That role belongs to you, the player, as well as you, Artemy Burak. And Reuben hates you for it. Reuben hates that you got to go to school to become a physician. He hates that you got to have a man like Isidore as a father. And most of all, he hates that you don't even seem to understand or appreciate just how lucky you are. But. None of these feelings are based off of objective fact. Instead, they come from a place of jealousy. In our first conversation with Reuben, he mentions that it is he that would make a more worthy successor to Isidore's legacy. It should be him running about town trying to find a cure for the sand plague. It should be he that everyone in town turns to for assistance. He should be the one earning the people's love and respect. But, as a certain theater director might say, that isn't his role to play. It's Artemis. But this truth does not stop Reuben from trying. Indeed, very little can stop Reuben at all. So, when the plague finally reveals itself in the town, Reuben gets to work. During the day, he slaves away in the town's theater turned hospital, essentially giving palliative care as more and more doomed townspeople keep being shuffled into the building to die. Reuben can't save the people here only ease their suffering with morphine and soft words as they slowly die. No one with the plague lasts longer than a day, and it's maddening. So at night, his real work begins. Reuben, like Artemy, is seeking a cure. He does not have Isidore's Menku inheritance or the trust of the kin to fall back on. Instead, all he has is some physician's training, a scalpel, and a shed generously loaned to him by bad grief to work out of. It's not enough. Even with all the dead and infected tissue he can collect from the hospital, studying the plague itself is yielding no results. He needs something else, something bigger. So, he steals the body of an immortal man. 
Simon Kane was a staple of the town's community, well loved by nearly everyone who knew him. He was also extremely old. Indeed, rumors of Kane's longevity are what led the bachelor to this town in the first place. People often wondered if Simon Kane was long lived or simply immortal, but more and more people were leaning towards the latter as he passed his 150th year. This is what made it all the more shocking when he was found dead, the same exact night as Isidore, almost as if the two of them had coordinated the ends of their respective lives. This immortal man was the puzzle piece Reuben was missing. With the aid of the bachelor, Reuben goes to work. He begins to dissect Simon in order to study what made him immortal. If he was immune from all the diseases that should have killed a man of his age, his blood could be the key to forming a panacea to the incurable sand plague. As Reuben cuts Simon, he is committing an act that is considered severely taboo. Only a menku is permitted to cut open a body, but Reuben cares little for these kin traditions. Saving the town is more important to him than respecting that which is considered holy, the body. The kin, obviously, do not take kindly to this behavior, and tip Artemy off on Reuben's misdeeds. Artemy can try and find Reuben and discover what he's doing, only to inadvertently lead the kin straight to his base. On two separate nights, Artemy can take his knife and brave into the night, killing the four Ongduns that threaten to kill Reuben for his sins one night, and attack and possibly lead away three men of the kin the next night. Unfortunately for Artemy, Reuben, and the kin, none of the strife actually matters. It does not bring the town closer to a cure, and it does not even preserve Reuben's life if Artemy goes down to protect him. Even if Artemy chooses to ignore Reuben's quests, Reuben's life is not endangered by this lack of action. The only thing gained by helping Reuben and cutting those Ongduns is a little more information on his attempts to cure the plague and to grow a bit closer to the man. Even still, he barely seems grateful for the effort. By day seven, Reuben's fate is truly sealed. Soon, I must bid you farewell, friend. Remember me fondly. If Artemy wasted too much time and was unable to devise a cure for the sand plague by then, Reuben will be missing from the hospital that morning. When speaking with Agula Lilich, she will reveal that Reuben is dead, but left a single sample of a cure for sand plague. In his final moments, he credited Artemy for creating it. The player can then storm off to see Aspidy, a spiritual leader of the kin, and ask her if they had a hand in Reuben's death. She will deny it, instead saying that Reuben felt intense guilt for desecrating Simon's corpse and took his own life. And after all that, all that's left to show from all this conflict and strife is a single dose of panacea. It's not enough to save the town, but Reuben's back-breaking labor is enough to save at least one person. Unfortunately, this cure cannot be replicated, so it's still up to Artemy to find a sustainable cure that will be able to save every infected person in town. But looking back, Reuben's actual cause of death is ambiguous. Perhaps Aspidy is telling the truth, and Reuben really did understand the gravity of his sacrilege, that by dissecting a beloved community member without his family's consent, or holy menku status, he was doing something wrong, and that the guilt that came with this, combined with the strain of developing the town's only cure for the plague that was destroying it, it was all simply too much. Alternatively, perhaps Aspidy is lying because of the familial bond she and Artemy share. She knows that Reuben was your friend, and she doesn't want to tell you that she's aware of that the kin were responsible for his murder. Still, perhaps neither of these theories are right. Reuben was working every day, night and day, exposing himself to plague, gore, viscera, cutting and straining and working 24 seven, no stop, no breaks. There's a chance that, after developing that first and final bottle of panacea, he just collapsed from exhaustion and died right there. Reuben was alone. That's how he lived, and that's how he died. Regardless of the cause, 
the responsibility of trying to cure the town on his own? It was too much. He didn't have enough people around him to pull him back from the darkness. And so he's gone. Reuben is dead. He couldn't cure the Sand Plague. He couldn't surpass Artemy. And he couldn't overcome his own hangups. And when he finally did succeed in creating that one dose of panacea, he didn't even want to take credit for the work he'd done. For all that he accomplished. It's a lonely end for a lonely man. In the theater of death, the place you go each time you die, Reuben will be there. And if you speak to him, he'll share with you these final words. My path was called the Warden. With the fruits of my sacrilege, I sated the town. Of course, there is another end to Reuben's tale. Let me be clear about one thing before I continue. It was never vanity that drove Reuben to become the town's physician. Instead, it was his true, burning desire to be useful, to help the people in the town who really needed him. He just believes that he's better suited to do this than you. It's this pureness of belief, this integrity, that makes Reuben's hostile behavior a little more palatable, understandable, and human. This point of view shines through in Artemy's more measured, polite dialogue options when speaking to Reuben. He doesn't like that Reuben is mistreating him and is being suspicious about his friend, but Artemy still holds affection for this man because he knows there's good behind those hard, intense eyes. If Artemy is successful in finding the recipe for a reproducible panacea by day 7, Reuben will still be missing from the hospital in the morning. Only this time, he will not have collapsed under the weight of his responsibility. Instead, Artemy will find him in his apartment, finally taking the long-needed rest that he truly deserved. Reuben spent his days caring for doomed patients in that hospital, often covering for Artemy's shifts while he ran about looking for a cure. At night, he committed atrocities that weighed on his soul in order to try and find a cure for a disease that was destroying his home. And he did this without support from anyone, he might say. But that really isn't true. Bad grief gave him a place to do his work in secret. The Bachelor gave him direction, a path to follow as he tried his best to form a cure. And most importantly, he had you, Artemy Burak, who never gave up on him. Despite his hostility, his accusations, his rage, and his jealousy, you still made time to visit Reuben, to invite him to a night of rekindling friendships, to check on him when he was in trouble. You were there for him, even now, as he rests quietly. I'll rest when I've been buried. You helped shoulder the burden that he thought he could not share. You were his friend. At this point, Reuben is safe. Artemy can either choose to wake Reuben up and reminisce about him about the past, what it was like to be friends as kids and how different things are now. Alternatively, Artemy can see that his serious friend is resting in the middle of the day and choose to simply let him sleep. After all, he certainly needs it. Reuben's role in the story is reduced from this point forward. Which makes sense. He's aware that you've made a cure and that you used your mystical Menku legacy to accomplish it. You are inheriting your father's burden in earnest, and Reuben is in the process of accepting this. Still, there's a sadness about him. You're saving the town, but his role here has been called into question. On day 11, when all the shit and steep is hitting every fan in town, you can find Reuben sitting next to the military at the train station. If you take the time to speak with your friend one final time, Reuben will inform you that he plans to leave. He's going to join the military and participate in the endless war that his country has orchestrated. He'll likely die out there. That is, unless you ask him to stay. When Artemy asks Reuben to stay, he accepts it without question. It's almost as if he was leaving to make room for you to take his place, and that he needed to go permission to stay in his home, where the people who love him are. It's very dramatic, very self-sacrificing, and oh so very Reuben. On day 12, when the plague is defeated and the town is finally saved, Reuben can be found on a stairway to heaven. 
alongside Laura and Grief, so long as they're also still alive. Four friends, reunited and stronger, having faced the adversity of Crisis, can learn to love each other and themselves yet again. As you're doing your victory lap and speaking to everyone you can, it's at this point that Artemy can ask Ruben to join him in learning the Manku tradition, to become your student. He resists the idea at first, but even though he sees the irony of becoming your student when he's been trying to surpass you the entire time, he accepts the idea with grace and humility. He is a humble after all. He even seems excited at the prospect of learning new medical techniques from a man he can once again truly call his friend. Reuben was never truly a failure, and even though he was filled with jealousy, he was never truly a bad person either. He was just a man who suffered more than an ordinary person. Failure is pain, and when you try to take on the incredible burden of saving the world around you, it's inevitable that you will feel failure sting. But it does not define you. What defines you is how you respond to failure, how you react to it, and how quickly you can get back up. And sometimes it's harder than others. But if you have some relationships with good people that you keep around you, then maybe they can pull you back from the darkness when you can't do it yourself so you can live to enjoy another day. That's what having friends is for, and even if you kick and scream, they'll still help you. None of us like to fail, and sometimes it's really difficult to rely on the help of others, but you have to do it. And ultimately, you'll be wiser and stronger from the struggle. Because after all... All the wisdom you gain you pay for in pain. Hey everyone, thank you for watching this video all the way through. I know it's a good deal longer than my last, and I really hope you've enjoyed this one. I tried my absolute best to make it good and improve on the quality, in terms of audio at least, from my last video. If you like what you saw, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter at LoquaciousLore. Leave comments with ideas and suggestions for future videos if you please, and tell me what I missed. It's hard to gather data on everything that happens in this game, I'm sure I didn't cover everything. And once again, please consider donating your time and attention to Black Lives Matter. The people have not stopped pushing for social change since my last upload, and progress is being made, but there's just so much more to do. Links in the description will tell you how you can help. Thanks for watching. Peace.